Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of the John Morris Show. Dang, the response to yesterday's message has been a little crazy. So my phone has been literally blowing up with emails and tweets and YouTube comments till like five in the morning. Actually, frankly, it's still going. But what's cool about it is how many people got it. Now, Cynical old me, that part of it kind of surprised me. I didn't think quite as many people were on the same page, but lots of you did. In fact, some of you, you devious little sneaks, went to the original video that I had mentioned and found old dude's comment and, shall we say, had a chat with him, which I probably shouldn't say, but I will, was kind of awesome, so... That was cool. Anyway, one of the comments uh, I thought was interesting and I want to talk about today. So the comment was this, said, free stuff is for those who are never grateful nor thankful for the individual who put in the hard work in providing it for those in need. Now, that's not exactly how I would probably say that. And I think it's important to try to avoid superlatives like all free stuff. And I, I know he didn't use the word all, but it's kind of implied. So I think we need to to put it in its proper context and so forth. But there's something to be said here about respecting other people's artistry, whatever it is, whether it's building some sort of application, whether it's working at you know some tech company, helping be on it, being part of a team, or whether it's teaching other people how to code. There's something to be said for having respect for that and how it relates to having respect for your own artistry. Because I often find that developers or people in general who are loath to pay somebody else for their services have trouble when it comes time to charge for their own. And so that's what I want to talk about today because that's really kind of the point of all this, isn't it? So take take my little brother, for example. So he's working with a client in Oregon right now. Now, apparently, I can't say who that client is. But gee, big client, big corporate client, client in Oregon. I wonder who that could be. Now, I'm not supposed to say, but maybe I should uh, just do it. Hint, hint. <laughs> anyway, he was telling me about... <laughs> This restaurant he went to in Oregon and this $40, $47 steak that he bought himself. Now, when he told me that, I thought he was crazy. That he'd better get a, well, I can't really say what I told him he should get with his steak. But suffice to say, I thought he was crazy. But then he told me why he did it. So, and you may have heard this, but my brothers and I grew up pretty poor. And I don't mean the, oh, I can't have the latest Xbox poor. I mean the, I haven't eaten for three days, I'm going to steal this Apple poor. Which unfortunately is something that I've done in my life. Now, I'm not proud of that, but when you're 10 years old and you haven't eaten for three or four days, you might be surprised what you find yourself capable of. So growing up in that environment, you tend to internalize a lot of bad ideas. And you usually end up, it seems, with a horrible relationship to money. Now, money is ultimately about giving to get, giving value to get money. But when you grow up that poor, you tend to focus on the getting part more than the giving part. And it kind of becomes about schemes instead of doing honest work or providing some sort of honest service. Because you feel like you don't and you never will deserve it. It's kind of like when my wife and I bought our our last car. So it's a pretty nice car. It's a minivan. But it's got DVD players and electric this, that, the other, all that stuff. Uh, But but when when I was there doing it, even same thing when I bought, you know, bought our house or the house before that, whatever. I always just feel weird. I always feel out of place. Like I don't don't belong there. There's this part of me that just still thinks that I'm this hood rat kid that lived in the the trailer and this this kind of thing isn't for people like me. Like we don't get to do this kind of stuff. I always have that part 
uh, that there's that part of me that always kind of feels that way. So I just always feel out of place. And that's kind of the crux of all of this. But it's also why my little brother bought that $47 steak. Because he grew up the same way I did. He has those same internalized bad ideas. He has that internalized relation, relationship to money that's not healthy. And it limits him or tries to limit him in the things that he does. So, for example, when he's in a salary negotiation with a company and he's about to turn down a $180,000 job because when you look at it objectively, it's not really, it's not, it's not enough or maybe there's something, you know, about the company that he doesn't like or whatever. There's always this part of him that's like, what am I doing? I am a hood rat from the trailer park. I should just take the money. I should go for the money. Like, what am I doing? And, you know, the, it can be very limiting because, or there's a part of him that says, like, I should take the money because this will never happen again. Like, this, this is me we're talking about. I'll never get this chance again, so I should just go for it. But... He's he knows that there's things that are more important than, than money. He knows that he has to make sure and stand up for himself and be assertive for what he actually deserves. And so he he will sometimes turn that stuff down. And so he's on a mission to obliterate all of these bad, bad ideas with himself, to internalize the idea that he does deserve what he's getting. Now... I told him that a $20 steak would have probably been good enough, but whatever, it's his money. <laughs> but that's kind of, that's really the deeper point though here, isn't it? When when we go back to the comments that, that old dude made yesterday that I, that, were, that I was talking about in, in yesterday's video, the specific idea of you know, wasting time in order to quote unquote save money, you know, that that's a bad idea, right? We can all look at that and and know that, that that's not that's not the way it's probably not smart to think that way about this kind of thing but it's more than that right it's deeper it's more insidious it's about how we relate to money in general all the bad ideas we've internalized and we don't even know it i mean just think about this for a second how many of you even cringe when i just say that word money now to be honest I still cringe a bit when I say it, but why? Why should it really be that awkward or taboo to say or hear or talk about? Money, money, money. Why is that so such a big deal? So here's the important part of all of this. All of this stuff, it's not something that you can just brush off because at some point, you're going to start asking people to give you money for your work. And all of these seemingly little issues that you have or may have when it comes to giving people money are going to come right back at you when it comes time to asking for money. And they will mess with your head and they'll limit you if you let them. They'll cause you to do everything for free for the first few years when you get into web design and web development. That was me. They'll cause you to, when you do start charging, they'll cause you to charge almost nothing for, for your services. Again, that was me. They'll cause you to bail on your first two clients, not because you can't do the work, but because this whole thing of being paid to do this just kind of freaks you out. Again, that was me. And, and they'll cause all sorts of other craziness. So, my point in all of this is when you reach the point where you understand the value for you of paying someone else for their service, you'll understand why someone else would pay you for yours. You'll gain that respect for artistry, which will include your own. And it changes everything. It changes your relationship to money. It changes you know, what you think you deserve, what you think you're worth all of those things, uh, and, and it can really be a life-changing thing. So take that for what you will, but it's something that I've learned the hard way and I've seen other, people's learn the hard, other people learn the hard way. And it's really the deeper issue and point behind everything that we talked about in yesterday's video. 
All right, let's get down to business. So we are slowly creeping towards the end of the Udemy $10 deal that I've been mentioning. Uh, if it, if you're someone who wants to fast track that initial learning curve that you go through when you first get into web design and web development, again, we talked about that yesterday. There's kind of this, there's this learning curve or this chunk of stuff that you just kind of got to get through to get to the point where you can start doing this for a living to go from the learning how to do it part to the making money doing it part. There's this just kind of chunk of stuff you got to get through. So there's lots of different ways you can approach that. If you're someone who wants to fast track that, if you want to get to the making money part a little bit quick, or maybe you need to, then this is as good an opportunity as any. It's a, it's a chance for you to trade again, a little bit of money for a big chunk of, of time. It's also If the stuff we've been talking about yesterday and today resonates with you a little bit, it's an opportunity for you to change, take a step towards changing your relationship with money in the sense that you, 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 you can start to respect someone in this case, the teachers of those courses for their artistry and be willing to invest in them and what they're doing, which again, helps you change your perception of yourself and your respect for your own artistry. So again, if that's something that that resonates with you, then this is one good good step to start doing that. Oh, and by the way, you're going to help yourself <laughs> learn how to do this stuff a lot faster. So anyway, the link for that is johnmorrisonline.com slash may. Just click on that. It'll trigger the discount and all that stuff. And then you can kind of look through and search for the courses over there. So All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and we'll talk to you next time.